Hello, everyone. Welcome to the CARTA info session, part of our Conversation Cafe series here with MUSC Sustainability. Very briefly, before we begin, I'm going to explain a little bit about what we do and how you can get more involved. Uh, so to begin, MUSC Sustainability works on a variety of initiatives, including recycling and waste management, energy and water, food, transportation, climate, and green building. If you want to get more involved, you can sign up for our newsletter, which can be found at musc.edu slash go green. It's a monthly newsletter just with events, happenings, ways to get involved. You can also follow us on social media at the tag MUSC Go Green and also on Yammer if you are an MUSC employee. And with that, I'm oh, sorry, real quick, before we get started, I wanted to direct everyone to please put your questions in the Q&A panel and not the chat panel if you're able to. Um, and you can do this on mobile on the left, there's directions, there's three dots that should be at the bottom of your screen, which will open up the menu to select the Q&A. And on desktop, it should be available in your right panel on the bottom right. You'll have to click this little arrow, which will open the Q&A panel. And with that, I'm going to introduce Michelle, John, and Morgan with the VCD COG and the and CARTA, the bus service. And with that, I'll turn it over to Michelle. Okay, one second. Let me make sure you guys can hear me. I'm going to turn this up just a second. John, I got you over there in the corner so we can be appropriately social space. So the way of this work is to start out with just some updates from CARTA, and then we'll open it up to questions, but feel free to put your questions in the Q&A panel as they present. Hi guys, um, great to be here with you guys. Sorry I can't be there or we can't be there in person, um, but we definitely wanted to kind of touch base with you guys. It's been a, a while since I have uh, spoken or to the group or to a lot of you guys since earlier part of this year. So we just wanted to make sure that we kind of touch base a little bit and we hope to have another one of these before the end of the year to kind of give you guys a few updates on where we're going at that point. Um, so, again, thank you all for joining us for those of you who have not been able to join us in person. And so you're able to join now because we're doing this virtually welcome and thank you for coming. Um, just in case for th those folks who do not know who we are, we'll go and introduce ourselves very quickly. My name is Michelle Emerson. I'm the marketing and communications manager for BCD COG, CARTA, Tri County Link and all the entities that we manage and then we have. Uh, Morgan Grimes over here in the corner. I'm going to kind of give her a little bit more of an introduction um, shortly, but she is our new outreach and communication specialist, uh, primarily targeting the LCRT project. And then we have Mr. John Dotson. I'm going to turn it a little bit just so you can see Mr. Dotson over there. Um, he is our transportation planner, our primary senior transportation planner. All right. Okay. Very good. Okay, so we will be monitoring uh, the question um, in the chat. Uh, feature over here so we can try to get to any questions that you have after we've kind of provided you with a few updates. Um, unfortunately, we are kind of running behind on some other things, so we'll probably have a little bit quicker session than we normally do when we're in person and we can spend a little bit more time. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it so you guys can get the information and then ask us anything that you need some more information on. So initially, the main thing um, that we wanted to talk about is the main thing that we have all been dealing with over the last few months is COVID related. Um, so as many of you may have realized that um, we had a service reduction for several months and we were running Sunday service. We have since returned to regular service as of, I believe, around May. Um, Express service still only has one bus, correct? <clears throat> that is coming. There's no additional buses that come right. each time. Right, right, right. right. exactly. Um, we are monitoring capacity levels. I will touch on that in just a second as well. Um, and we, we more recently um, put the 203 medical shuttle back into service as well. Um, John will touch on that in just a second as well. Um, for COVID, what we have been doing is we've stepped up our cleaning processes um, since the very beginning. 
we always cleaned our buses every night, but now we actually use a spray, a, what is it, a higher potency disinfectant spray, hospital grade spray, basically. And we also wipe down all the buses. Um, that being said, they are public transportation buses. And so quite often other riders are getting on and things may occur. If you guys see anything, or if you have any issues, please let us know immediately so that we can act on it immediately. We're trying to stay on top of any issues like that very quickly so we can handle it and make sure that um, we're making it as safe as possible for everyone who is riding, for our drivers and for all of our riders. Okay. Um, as I said before, everything is pretty much back in service. 203 is running again. John, did you want to touch a little bit on how frequency, how yeah. frequency is and whatnot. Um, so we put the 203 back into service um, and talking with you all, I believe early last month. Um, the changes to the 203 that are different from how it used to operate is that um, we're not going down Lockwood and that's at a request from UM, MUSC um, because those park and ride lots are not available right now. So we're just going by directionally down Haygood, getting that lot and back. Um, there is a schedule for that, but it's more or less because we're running at half capacity right now. So as soon as the buses hit 50%, we just go. So we're not necessarily beholden to time points. We're just going when the bus is full. So you get potentially more trips that way, especially in tandem with the MUSC vehicles in operation. Um, and we've also put additional vehicles out there in the morning, uh, particularly between about 6.30 and 8 o'clock, 8.15, we've got an additional bus out there. Um, so, and also, I think early next month, we'll actually be able to swap out those smaller vehicles for a larger bus. So there'll be even more capacity out there at that time. Um, and then specific to the routes in operation, um, Michelle had mentioned that we've gone back to mostly full service. Uh, the exception the exception to that is if you guys ever use the Airport Express, that's not in operation right now. Uh, and then the hop services are in limited hours as as opposed to how they used to operate. So they start a little bit later in the day and they end a little bit earlier in the evening as well. Okay. Okay. So um, again, we are trying to make sure that we are watching our service levels and what our ridership is and we're doing as much as we possibly can to be as flexible as we possibly can to make sure um, that we are not creating too much of an issue as far as capacity is concerned and trying to allow passengers to socially distance as much as possible Again, it is public transportation and that's not very easy to do and very often is not able to be done at all so that takes me to the next thing that we instated um, back when this all started as well, is how to ride. And I'm sure all of you are very familiar with that. Um, we put in effect several um, changes that we require riders to do. One is definitely to wear their mask while they're on board. Um, you guys usually are great. You don't have to do a touch um, payment system. So that's not a problem with you guys. But the main thing is making sure that there is a face covering that is worn when they are on the bus. Um, you may probably also have seen that we put um, some plus, uh, what is it? Um, plexiglass um, at where the drivers are located and that's to help them be safe as well, um, keeping them without having as much contact. And again, we're doing our cleaning services. So that's one of the things that we're hoping that even when we're, you're on a crowded bus that um, you have your face covering, but please, if possible, um, if there is room, please try to socially distance yourselves at that point. Um, again, we know it may not always be the case, but we want to try as much as possible. Um, so finally, with COVID the, um, and other things that have been going on in the last few months, we wanted to make sure that if you have any issues or if you have any questions, that you are going to the right locations to get to us um, and let us know what's going on and so that you can get information as well. Um, we uh, definitely recommend that you follow us on social media, that you also um, look on our website periodically and sign up for our alerts because the entire situation is very fluid. It's still ever changing, um, not to mention some of the other issues that we are having with protests in different cities. Um, and sometimes we're having to shut down service in different areas and municipalities based off of what is happening. So it could be a very quick 
change that is not something that we can kind of foresee happening. So going on those channels, and I know most of you guys are on Yammer and that's great. And John and Christine do a great job at letting us know if there's any issues over there. But if you wanna definitely kind of stay ahead of it and know what's going on on a real time basis, then that's the best way to do it. Um, we try to be very um, active on those areas. Social media is not always 24 hours. So definitely signing up for the alerts. We send those out, we try to send those out. Um, on any route that we're having issues on, whether it be flooding, whether it's uh, any issues with crowds or COVID or anything else. So definitely make sure that you're following us, that you sign up for the alerts, um, and that you get to us with any other questions or issues that you may have. Um, I am going to let John give you a few more updates in just a second. I want to go ahead and again officially introduce Ms. Morgan Grimes. She is our new outreach and communication specialist, primarily targeting the LCRT project. We should have another update on the LCRT project coming up before the end of the year, um, and she will be bringing that. Ms. Morgan, did you have anything that you wanted to kind of say to everybody? Hi, I'll just introduce myself again. I'm Morgan Grimes, and I'm very excited to be on this project. I believe it will definitely connect the low country. So I'm very excited to be on board, and I can't wait to hopefully meet you all one day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Morgan. Okay, so we'll get John to give a, little, a few more service updates, and then we'll try to kind of get to some of your questions and answers. So the, the only update I really have is actually related to the LCRT project and it's a route optimization plan that we're working through, um, we being us in partnership with the consultant. Um, and that's something we're hoping to, to develop by the fall, December of this year, and we'll be reaching out to you guys as well in coordination on that. But that's a kind of very loose plan at the moment. And that's that's the extent of the updates. Okay. All righty. So, again, uh, no other service disruptions really that we see going forward. We are trying to um, gather and, and get our information together and make sure that um, we are on top of everything, dealing with safety and making sure that we provide you service as much as possible. Um, so, we will go ahead and John Brooker, uh, did you have anything else before we kind of get into some of the questions and answers? No, I think that sounds great. I just remind people, please put any questions, comments, suggestions you have into the Q&A panel. Uh, but we do have one from uh, D. Um, and they asked if the park and ride, did you guys say that the park and ride is not running right now? And I said, I do not believe so. The park and ride, yes, it is operating right now. Yes, yeah, it Hager, is. The Hager Bottoms. Yes. Um, the Haygood lot is, and they're running for the North Charleston Park and Ride is operating as well. So express buses are operating, so those park and rides are up and running. It's just that um, when we are in the old normal, um, and a lot of times we would have capacity issues on the first bus, um, we would have to deploy a second bus. Um, and what that bus does, it's supposed to follow behind that first bus to get those additional passengers. And many of you, you already know that that term is a pusher. And so we have not had to put that out of course because of the capacity issues um, or the ridership issues. And a lot of people have been working from home. So we do have the first bus that's going out, but we don't have that pusher that's going out for. So, so for some of our riders who would depend on that second one and just kind of want to take that one, even if it's just to have a, a different time or space, or whatever the case may be, those are not currently running. Now, again, we are watching the capacity levels and if it becomes an issue and we have to put something else out, then we will. But right now it seems to be going pretty well. Um, I can tee up the next question. Just asked, who can we address concerns with stop we feel are in an unsafe area? Um, you can let us know. It will be going to John Dodson. Um, would you like them to just go ahead and email you or they can just send it here, which, or they can send it to John and send it to you, whichever way is easier. For either, you. either which way, whatever is easiest for you guys is fine with us and we'll just take those stuff, requests, comments, into consideration and, and see what we can do about them. Okay. So, um, if you can uh, send them to John Brooker, or you can send them, the, I can just give him my um, email address if you want to. Um, you can send it to um, 
M. Emerson. Uh, John, if you want to send our emails out to everyone so they'll have them, that's fine as well. Or if you want to send it to the specific person, that's well, that's fine as well. What I'll do is I'll drop your email into the chat panel. Emerson at BCD Cog. Perfect. We'll put that in the chat panel as we answer some more questions, just so people can get be pasted right from there. Okay. Great. Um, so I think there was another question about Express that I think you already tackled. Um, but where can I find info for that? I'm taking the bus from all. Sorry, that's D's question reference to. Um, I don't know if you guys understand what that's a reference to. Let's see. They were saying, and I saw something about the mall. Uh, I'm not sure what bus or when to. There we go. Which mall is would be my question. Unfortunately, if we were in front of each other, I could just kind of ask them that. But which mall are they? Uh, tr are they talking about trying to get to the Citadel Mall? Oh, Citadel Mall. Yeah. Looks like it. Um, and where are they coming from? From Citadel to MUSC. Okay, so um, there is the express route two that goes to the Citadel Mall, and that goes from Citadel Mall to MUSC. There's also Route 33 that travels from Citadel Mall to MUSC as well. So route 33 is one of our local routes, as we call them, basically on the regular bus, and it runs throughout the day. The express bus is the one that runs in the morning and the afternoon, Monday through Friday only. Great. Um, I have another question from Mary. She said, is the Somerville bus on the normal schedule? I am only in the office two days a week. If it's, yeah, John said that it is running on schedule. And right now, thankfully, we have uh, not had a whole lot of traffic to contend with, but that may be changing soon with uh, the potential of school getting back in. So we kind of have to try to monitor, monitor that and kind of see how that goes as well. Great. Um, the next question I see in the queue is from Linda. It says, can we get benches at the stop on the corner of Rutledge and Calhoun. There is a park next to the brick building. Okay, a park next to the brick building. Okay. Okay. We will definitely look into it. John is writing that down right now, and um, we'll see what we can do about that. Perfect. All right. The next question I've seen here is from Christine. It says, how many people can ride an express bus at a time? Right now, we don't have um, out, outside of what the regular capacity is. Which yeah, is so out, outside of the 203 shuttle, um, that's the only one we're running at the capacity. The others, um, we're flagging them. So if we see a bus that's got some excessive crowding to the point that we are not necessarily social distancing, um, we have the capability of putting out an additional vehicle, um, but we haven't actually seen that happen yet. And so, as I said, it's a little easier sometimes with um, some of our services than others to kind of monitor it at while it's out in the field um, with express. Um, we are getting daily reports on when we hit a capacity level. I don't believe we've hit capacity on most routes, like we're standing room only on any routes. Um, every now and then, I think for a little bit there, we were getting some on route 10, but the expresses we have not. Um, so. Again, but that being said, we're watching the capacity levels. Our supervisors have been told to not only look for when it's standing room only, but also to look when it hits, what is it, I think about half capacity. Right. And so then we will start tracking that. And if that bus is regularly hitting over half of capacity, we'll talk internally about putting more equipment out there so that we can, again, make sure that capacity, the, the capacity on those buses are down a little bit, but there may be times when, again, it is where you might be sitting next to someone, but as long as there are seats that are available, try to socially distance as best possible. Great. Um, we have a specific question here about, you know, how to get from the Citadel to NUSC and how often it runs. Um, maybe the best thing to do here is to point people to yeah. find that information. Yeah, they can go to the web, but if they need um, specific information and they want 
we we do trip planning and we'll assist with whatever trip planning they can email me as well and we will walk them through it what options they have show them how they can either use google transit or our app and it'll actually tell them instruction by instruction is what they need to do when they're trying to ride so yeah just tell them to email me and we'll have a conversation about it that's looking for it Say that again. Uh, Michelle's email, your email is now listed in oh, the okay. chat. I see it now. Yep. There. Um, let me see if I can find the next question. Uh, the next question I see is from Joan. It says, is there any chance that the PM Express 2 Mount Pleasant bus could delay leaving MUSC bus stops from 424 to 4? Those on a time clock cannot make this bus without losing 15 to 30 minutes of time. Tell me the time again, John. Yeah, so it's uh, the time is delay it from 4.24 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. What shift, if they don't mind, what shift is that we're looking at? What what time do they get off to be able to? Is that a four o'clock in shift or? Um, I'm guessing that that's a shift ending at 4.30 um because the cl time clocks work on that seven minute cycle but if you, know, if you can clarify the shift that you are inquiring about we can, we can definitely take a look at it um we try to stay as up to date with you guys as far as shifts and if it's something that's just off a little bit and if we can tweak it just a little bit to help um that's a pretty decent change in time so that would be a decent enough change to schedule if we had to but john yeah well, we can look at that and see how that impacts the other right yeah sometimes yeah yeah so if we know that shift time that'd be great because if she wants it at 4 30 i'm guessing that if she's got a clock out and walk to the bus that it may be a 4 20 i don't know that's yeah so she just responded yeah. to that. so she said 4 30 um and yeah you can't clock out 23 if you are leaving at 4 30 um can't make it to bus stop in one minute is what she said um so i guess like, just that seven minutes would give her enough time but that's a 4 30 in schedule is what she was saying though no, that's shift ends at 4 30. okay gotcha okay this is a seven minute window for some people all right uh, the next question i have on here is from gloria um it says we take the number three express bus. Can we have one more bus added to the afternoon schedule, like a 4.15 or a 4.20 p.m.? Can increase the number of stops made on it because most of the apartments are across from Lambs Elementary before it goes to the base? So, um, thank you for that question. Um, we can definitely look at the express three and see about what we can do if we can add a bus to that um and what i'll do john on some of these if you keep record of it, i'll make sure that i get back to you or we can place the question um any results we have because i do want folks to not have to wait until december until they get answers to some of this stuff which is possible when our next meeting might be november december as far as the increase in number of stops, um, that is something that we try to not do as much as possible on Express because the whole service, it lends itself to being a faster service because we have limited stops. Um, every stop we add, that lessens it being an Express bus and becoming more of our regular bus. And we've got a Dorchester Road bus that does go down there. And I totally understand where everyone is coming from with thinking you know wanting those additional stops and sometimes like i said we can do some here and there but we try to not really add too many stops because like i said it, it really does take away from it being expressed at that point in time um as we move forward you know our original plans was to have a lot of different things going on with service and kind of looking at things and and doing route optimization and possibly even doing something with 12 at some point in time and, and helping that to be more connected with some of our other buses. But we're kind of, um, a lot of things are on pause at this point, but we will continue to look at that and um, see if there's anything that we can do on that. Um, what I can say is those folks can definitely get on it. Now it would be a transfer. They can get on a route 12, which will take them down to the festival center where they then can get an express bus. And so that's right before the base. And so it's a little bit of a drive. I mean, it's a little bit of a, a 
period in there where they'd have to be on the bus and it is a transfer, but it is something that's doable with our buses service the way it is right now. Great. Um, have is in relation to COVID safety measures, which you touched on earlier. Uh, but Hawley asks, do you require one person occupies one row only on the express bus? No, we do not. Not at this time. Again, um, we will continue to monitor uh, everything and kind of see how it's going. But right now, as John stated earlier, the only bus that we really have capacity limits on are the medical shuttles. And it's just with the frequency and what we're doing with um, the medical university. But again, we are monitoring it. Um, if it does become a ongoing issue, that's when we talk about making some changes. But I will tell you some of our local route services, sometimes it is someone that's sitting right next to anyone, which is why we are requiring face map, uh, face covering, so that if you do have to be closer than six feet, that at least you have your face covering on. And then to further add to that, the buses we use for the fixed route system are not the same buses we would use for the express. Um, and then regardless of what bus folks are using, um, we're, we have a, we have sanitizer available and we're also distributing masks on the bus. So we do have measures in place to, to help. Sorry, I forgot all about the sanitizer. Yes, we do have sanitizer that's at the very front of the bus. And as some of the communication efforts that we put out earlier, um, when everything started, I definitely recommend, I understand where everyone is coming from. Um, I definitely recommend, you know, if, if you have concerns, let us know. If you have concerns when I ride the bus, I make sure I have my own sanitizer. And sometimes I even have gloves if I want to do that. Um, if you want to wipe down an area, it's totally up to you, whatever you feel like is best for you at that point. If all the seats are taken and you'd rather stand, that's absolutely acceptable as well. Um, but again, we are monitoring it and trying to be on top of it as much as possible. I can't say that as soon as more than one person is in a seat, we'll put a bus out there. But again, if it becomes a ongoing issue with multiple folks, then we may look at it at that point. Great. Okay. Um, Next question I see here is from Patrice, and I think we mentioned this earlier, Michelle, but it's about uh, bus stops being closer to Sean Jenkins. Um, for the Express one stop uh, might be a shift time schedule issue as well, um, but they said it's nearly impossible for me to catch the last bus to North Charleston because it's so far. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we will, and that's, um, he was telling me where it's at, so we'll, with Sean Jenkins is one of your other buildings, okay. just a closer stop. Okay. And with that, well, I'm sorry, I can't see her question. I can see some of them, but I can't see her question. It was just a stop, right? It wasn't a particular time or a shift or anything. It was just, they were just asking for additional stop. Yeah, yeah. So will there be stops closer to Sean Jenkins on both sides of the street for the Express One bus? And they said it's tough for them to catch the last bus to North Charles because it's so far. Um, see, I don't know if that's a location and a timing issue or just location? It may just be a location because if we don't have anything right now, maybe we just put something out and um, or kind of modify something that we have. We'll take yeah, a look we'll at it and it. see. And um, there, I'm sure there are other people that may be on various shifts if that is something that's needed in that area. Great. Okay. Uh, we have a comment from Joan. She just says, thank you for the service. My car to buddies and I love it. We appreciate the drivers and continued service. So yeah, thank you for what you guys do. Oh, all of you guys, thank you. Thank you for coming and thank you. Appreciate each and every one of you. Great. Um, the next thing from Pesha Graham is I've noticed that drivers aren't stopping at all at MUSC stops unless the bell is rang. Will this be the case going forward? Let's take a look at that and see what's going on with that. So sometimes we get new drivers on. Um, our policy has been, and we've tried to make sure we communicate, excuse me, communicate that with everyone that you are supposed to pull the bell when you want to get off the bus. Um, and that's just throughout our system with every route, express, local service and everything. The only thing we don't require that on is Telluride. However, we do understand that express service is a different type of service. It only has those four or five stops in the downtown area usually. And so I think that most of the time, most of the drivers stop at all of them anyway. But when we do get new drivers on, and I'm not saying that's right again, our policy is that you gotta ring the bell, but just as a courtesy, I believe they're stopping. When we do get new drivers on, they go straight by the book as <laughs> that this is what it is. And so it would be wise for you still ring the bell 
um, but we will also translate that message over. We'll give that message to TransDev, excuse me, not translate, but give that message to TransDev and let them know. Just make sure that they are looking out and it'd be wise just to go ahead and, and pull the bell though, but we'll make sure we do cover it on our end as well. Great. Um, the next thing I see is from Gloria. She just, I think she's pushing a little bit further on the idea of um, the Lambs Elementary issue. They're saying it's a dangerous walk back from the base. The Express 3 passes the apartments. Um, so yeah, they're saying that the Express 3 passes the apartments, goes down to the base, and then they have to cross over Dorchester Road, which they thought was dangerous. Um, and they want you to look into it. Yeah, we'll we'll take a look at that because um yeah, let us take a look at that. It may involve taking something away to give something there, but we'll uh, and I don't know if that's the best area for it to talk. Let us look into it and we'll let give you what the outcome of it is either way, whether we can make a modification or if it doesn't seem like a safe thing or something that's doable, again, we'll let you know. Great. And yeah, um, Gloria, just to follow up on that, Michelle's email is in the chat window if you want to reach out and start a dialogue with her directly on that. Yeah, yeah. So Christine's clarifying that the uh, same issue is that people getting off the bus don't go to the base, they go to the apartments. Um, yeah. But yeah. We'll and that's why I said we'll take a look at it because that's what I said as they were saying that I was thinking that maybe it is, it's possible to take that away and put something but then again john and them have to look at a safety issue and make sure that that's it because i know at the base i believe there's a turn lane that the bus is actually getting in so it kind of sits there and at lambs it's just a straight shot i believe i don't think there's a turning lane so it would be really acting more like a regular bus and that's not necessarily how express normally operates but again let us take a look at it, and if it's a feasible thing, we'll, we can definitely make a change there. But yeah, we we hear you with the apartments, and that's where a lot of people are coming from. So we'll definitely take a look at it. Great. Um, I have a mm -hmm. question for you. I'm um, just in relation to the COVID measures. Um, mm -hmm. Is that something that you anticipate to stay stable for a little while? I know everything's kind of in the new normal, is in flux constantly, very fluid. Um, but I was just curious if you guys expect it to stay stable and if you kind of have anything linked to COVID metrics where you might make changes based on higher or lower rates of disease in the area. Um, right now, I believe we're anticipating it staying at, at the level that it is at this point. Um, I don't or I have not heard any discussion about reducing service if it's a surge or anything or um or or taking away any of the measures that we've done i honestly believe all of the measures that we have going on probably will be going on until at least the end of the year um but i will say that if things do occur and there is some type of surge and increase in numbers and whatnot and we have to take a step back we are prepared to do that. We've done it before, so we kind of, and we will try to make sure we give ample notice. Um, our executive director and our deputy directors are um, in constant contact with the municipalities um, and jurisdictions, finding out what's going on in their areas and what they're seeing, and kind of going off of cues from them, as well as they are in touch with MUSC executive staff on what levels are needed and when they may be reducing staffing or if they have some changes. And that's really what it comes from with the service for you guys. It's more so based off of the somewhat what we're seeing locally and in, in our little bubble of transportation. But a lot of it comes from the directive of what may be going on with MUSC and what some of the requests are. So it's very likely and I'm I'm I understand most of us are hearing that this fall may be challenging. So Again, that being said, that's one of the reasons that one of the main reasons I did want to come and talk to you guys today is to make sure that you are looking on all of those different ways that we communicate, because if things do change, we try to communicate it in as many places as possible, whether it be through John and Christine and they put it on Yammer or through any of our channels, but definitely stay connected with our channels. But if it goes the way some people are saying, then it's very possible that there may be some service fluctuations in the fall, depending on how bad it gets. If it stays about where it is, I don't see us going backwards until at least next year, I would say, John, do you, you yeah. might want to speak to any, that. any changes that we did even back in the spring, that was always at the direction of 
um, elected officials uh, at the local level and the state level. Um, so we would not be doing anything unilaterally. We would be doing any changes at the request of Tecklenburg or McMaster's or whoever. Um, so it's a lot would need to happen for, for that to likely occur. Exactly. And like I said, with you guys as president, which you guys will probably get information on before they would even come to us, quite honestly, sometimes and let them know, you know, they probably be letting you guys know what changes might be coming as far as your staffing originally. So. Great. Okay. Um, are Looks, people was, people to Low Country Go. Say that one uh, more time. Still directing people to Low Country Go. Yes. Uh, yes. I just wanted to bring that up for you know any potential service interruptions that if you're registered on that, that you can get the emergency free ride home. Is that still active? It is. It is. So yeah, if it if anything occurs and they. If for some reason, like, uh, uh, what was it last Saturday, this past Saturday, if we are requested um, to stop service for any type of community disruptions or protests or anything, and you are not able to get home, just go ahead and use that service. Go ahead and call your Uber, call your cab, make sure you document your receipt and submit it, and um, you will be reimbursed if you're, if you're using transit to get to your um, job that day. Okay. Was that the last one, John, or was it, it seems like it was one more. I just want to double check. They have to sign up for that low country that you, know, you just mentioned the emergency ride home. Do they have to be previously registered before that happens? Yes, on the yes. yes, yes, exactly. Great. So, yeah, I, don't wait until the. Say that again, John, I just put that link in the chat panel. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, because, yeah, don't wait until the actual event happens. Because then it may be an issue with finance as far as getting reimbursed on that. But if you definitely were registered prior to that and you show that you are a regular rider and you use it, we will reimburse you for that. Okay. Great. All right. I think that was everything. Would did I miss one last one? comment? I don't see any more questions, but we do have a comment from Kesha Graham saying that uh, just want to thank you for continuing to run Express during the initial time of COVID, March and April. This is a huge benefit to those of us who still have to arrive at work. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. And, um, you know, we are doing the behind the skill, the, the scenes work, but our drivers are the ones that are really the heroes in all of this, just like a lot of you guys are. Um, when a lot of us were being able to do different flexible things, a lot of you guys, and, and as well with our drivers, we're still out there doing their regular roles every single day. So thank you guys for all the work you do. Thank you for still riding with us, even through all of this and the ups and the downs and the changes and Sunday service and everything else. And um, we're going to continue to try to provide the best service possible, safely as possible. But again, if you see anything, let us know. We hope to come back to you either November, or December to kind of close the year out, kind of see where we're going for the beginning of next year. At that point, Morgan will have a few more updates on LCRT, which will impact you guys one way or another, um, because there will be uh, some service connection, whatever it may be, or whether you live along the corridor, it's going to affect and impact everybody in our area, in our um, tri-county area basically even if you don't live on the corridor so just be looking on the lookout for some really good things coming from that as well um, but thank you all for taking time out of your day today to come here and kind of give us any questions that you had and i look forward to seeing you guys next time anybody else got anything else everybody else good? i can um put my email or yes email yes out. if you want um well actually you know what uh, go ahead you can tell it to me and um uh john if you could just type it in and put it in the chat just so they can yeah. Yes. So it is Morgan lowercase G. Sorry. Yeah, you can take that off. Right? I'm Morgan on <laughs> Morgan G um as in goat um mm -hmm. at ecdcog.com. That is my email, so feel free to reach out to me anyone if you have any questions regarding the LCRT. Perfect. Just added it. And also all set. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Okay. All right. And also um, with that, like I said, as she comes back with the other updates, we will be um, trying to get out in the community as much as possible. That's part of what she's doing, talking to people in the community, yes. letting them know what's going on. So if you guys have any groups or neighborhood associations that you're a part of and you would like to invite her out, all of those are things that we will be welcoming into the latter part of the year into the early next year. 
Um, hopefully we'll be able to kind of t get out and be face to face with people a little bit more at that point. But until then, we're trying to do things that are a little bit different as well. We might hold Zoom meetings if, if you have a neighborhood association and she can kind of report on some things. So feel free to email either one of us mm -hmm. um, and we'll get you to John if we need to and we'll help you in whatever way we can. Great. Okay. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Right. Thank you, guys. Y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you again. Thank you.